Well, by about uh, 1975 in January, it was pretty clear that uh, the situation in terms of the survival of the whales had gone so badly downhill. No government seemed able to do anything about it, and the only workable plan we were able to come up with was to take a boat and go right out in the ocean and, against whatever odds uh, we had to face, find a whaling fleet. And then we would take some inflatable rubber boats with outboard engines called Zodiacs and put people in them and then drive out right in front of the harpoon so that the harpooner wouldn't have a shot at the whale without having to go through or blast apart um, that human shield. Our best terms are ones with a high, intense, immediate, instantaneous feedback media profile. Uh, it's not a, a slug it out number in the depths of somewhere where no one knows what the hell is going on and we just disappear one night. We left Vancouver, British Columbia on the 27th of April, 1975. 23,000 people came out to show their support. Our fourth day in the waters off Mendocino and still no sign of the whalers. We've run out of canned juice, coffee, vegetables, bread. Water is on ration and nobody's been able to wash except in salt water. If we don't find the whalers soon, all the money and support from thousands of people will have been for nothing. Crew morale is deteriorating badly. The Russians continue to elude us. Uh, many of the crew are now physically exhausted, and our only means of communication with the outside world is Captain John's 25-year-old radio phone. Okay, all hands on deck! One, two, three, four, five over there. There's one by the Vostok, and there's three over here. There's nine chasers all together. We followed the killer boat back to its mothership, the huge Delna Vostok. This is a 600-foot floating slaughterhouse capable of processing an entire whale in less than half an hour. We were left with no alternative but to carry out our pledge to use our bodies as shields to protect the whales. The only rule we kept was every time they pointed the gun another way, we'd swivel in front of that. And uh, we came up in one wave, and there he was, and we were looking right in the... I thought we were ahead of him. Plugged him, like, you know, he couldn't possibly shoot. Then we went down, and then... That fantastic sound, and you could hear the... of the, of the cable. And I guess we both ducked at that point, and I don't know what happened. So I guess they got an order from somewhere, and they uh, stopped. Um, slam, click the harpoon up and put the pins in and uh, shut her down and uh, they've been sitting here ever since. So we have stopped one chaser boat already and saved one pot of whales, which is not bad for our first morning's work. We received the first tangible evidence of our impact on the whalers. There is no fleet within 800 miles of the coast. So for the first time since the Second World War, whales can migrate along the North American coast without risk of being butchered. We kept up our harassment over a distance of 1,700 miles. Each time contact was made, the whalers responded by shutting down their operation. They would not leave dead whales floating in the water, and they would not kill whales in front of our cameras. So the camera proved to be mightier than the harpoon. The final score, 100 whales saved by direct confrontation, 1,300 other whales protected from the threat of being slaughtered off the coast of North America, and a Soviet fleet forced to waste time and money trying to evade Greenpeace.